All right, so in this video, I wanna cover two things about AI when it comes to retouching our pictures. The first one might actually be something you don't know or maybe didn't even realize. And the second one is to do with how I'm using AI to kind of help streamline my retouching when it comes to doing things like compositing. It doesn't take away anything at all from the photography and the lighting and all that really important stuff. But what it does do is help me to actually carry out tasks in Photoshop that would have been very time consuming and were kind of holding me back from doing the creative stuff. So I'll show you that in a moment. But first of all, let's just take a quick look at this picture here, which is a portrait that I took of my friend, Steve Healy. It's a one light shot. And you can see here, if I just put a new layer up here, let's just get a brush and I'll change that to red just for a second. And you can see here that the light has come in from this side here, quite high up, coming in from the side. So we're getting this side of his face lit and this side here in shadow. So very, very obvious. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use AI to just add some hair onto it. All right. Steve doesn't know I'm doing this, but let's just kind of show you what happens when we put the hair on. And this is the really clever thing that people maybe don't quite realize the AI is capable of doing. So I'm going to use the uh, selection brush tool over here from the toolbar. Absolutely love you using this. It's a great visual way of laying down a selection. And all I will do is just kind of brush around his head and over here, over to the shadow side, a bit on the top, just like that to say, look, this is where I want the hair to be. Now I'll then go to the contextual taskbar just here, click on the generative fill. And all I'm going to do is just type in hair. I'm not going to give it any more kind of, you know, descriptive kind of terms and whatever that I want it to do. I'll just let the AI decide what it thinks is best when it comes to hair, first of all. And let's just do that. I'll put in hair and I'll click on generate. And as usual, we'll give this maybe kind of 10 to 12 seconds, something like that, for the AI to then go to work and it will produce three variations of the first kind of what it thinks you should have. So give it a few seconds and here we go. And actually, it's not too bad. I have no idea what Steve looked like with hair, but maybe it was like this. But there's a couple of things about this that, I, that really do kind of impress me. The first one is I only typed in hair. I didn't put color. I didn't put anything else, just hair. And what you'll notice is that the hair that it has added in is dark hair. So it kind of matches in maybe what Steve would have had. But also the fact is that it's put it as gray hair as well as the old gray flecks of hair in there as well, just like there are on his beard. So it's kind of really intelligently looked at the original picture, which is obviously this one here, and thought, well, there's gray hair in the beard. So therefore, there must be gray hair on the hair on the top of his head. So we've got these variations here. I'll click generate just to add some more. And we'll just let that, uh, again, go from about 10 to 12 seconds. I'll speed it up a little bit and then we'll get those variations just there. And again, look, we go for these different ones. That's kind of cool, like that one. And we've got that one there. Again, with all the gray flecks of hair in just there. Now, the important thing about this is not only is it giving us a great result, but look at the results it's given us. You remember before I said that the light was coming in from this right-hand side. And when we look at the hair, the right-hand side of the, the hair there is illuminated. But the left-hand side here that's in shadow is in shadow. So it's not added in hair that doesn't really fit in with what we've actually uh, got already. The actual AI has given us something and it's matched the lighting to what the original picture had. And I think that is just incredible. So that's really, really clever stuff. Very, very handy when we're doing compositing. Now, the other thing I want to show you is regards to this picture here, my most recent composite that I've done of my friend Foxy. Now, the actual photo shoot, if I dive over to Lightroom, you can see here, all done in the studio. We've got examples of the kind of uh, trying to get the pose right with Foxy with all the lighting setup and what have you. So there's lots and lots of those shots there that I did to get right. And further up here, if I scroll all the way to the top, you can see the background plate, the environment that I wanted him to be. And when we did this, which was over in uh, in South Wales, there's my friend Anthony, kind of standing the distance that I was originally from Simon in the studio so that I could get the height, the perspective, and all that kind of stuff correct for when I captured the background. And it was just simply a case of once I'd actually taken a picture of Anthony, lock the focus, Anthony moves out the scene, then I take a shot. So I've got here the, the actual uh, proper depth of field of the scene without Anthony in it. Now, if I go back to the original picture, let's just go to here, and I have a look at the layers, you can see here, look, right at the very, very bottom, there's the background. 
And obviously then what I've done is I've added in all the elements to bring in the picture of Foxy to kind of com add the composite so it looks like he was originally stood in that scene. So all the way up to the top, like so. Now, one thing I want to show you is about the cutouts. This is what I mean about how I'm using the AI to really help me kind of carry out those time-consuming tasks that then leaves me to get on with doing the creative stuff. And it's all to do with the cutout of the hair. So if I go down to the original cutout, if I go to, say, this image here, you can see, look, there's the original cutout of Foxy that I did. If I turn the mask off, you can see the original shot. Where we've got all this flyaway hair, uh, and we've got that there, and that's the actual cutout. Now, I didn't want to spend too long. It was very difficult to pick up all those fine hairs, especially off that very kind of um, a neutral gray kind of background. So what I did was I used the Adobe Firefly technology to create the hair. The difference being is that this is something that you do at the almost towards the end of the actual editing, as opposed to the traditional way when you're doing selections and cutouts and making the hair, you do that way down almost at the very, very beginning of the cutout and then add everything in. So it's a different mindset, but it definitely, definitely works and I'm loving it. But let me just show you how I do it. So let's just go to the bit where we've got all those uh, elements in and I'll take it all the way to the part where we don't have Foxy with the hair. So I'll take all these ones off. Let's just turn those off here. So this is kind of what we're left with. You can see it's very, very rough. I've spent no time trying to make the selection uh, of the hair to be any good because I know that at this stage now, before the final finishing touches, then I'll add the hair in. And the great thing is, because of what I've showed you already with that picture of Steve, the hair that I now add into this will match with the lighting. That's really, really important and really clever. So let me show you then. So this is how I'll do it. I'll just add a new blank layer and I'll get that uh, selection brush tool again. And this time, look, I'll brush over Fox's hair like this. So I'll kind of, sometimes I'll do these kind of wavy patterns like this. I don't really know if that makes any kind of difference, but we'll put it in there anyway. And I kind of want the hair to be coming out a little bit like so. Maybe something like that. And if I do thinner bits, maybe that'll kind of fill it in as well. All right, so we'll go with that. Then I'll go to the contextual text bar just up here, and I'm going to put in Viking hair, and we'll go ponytail, blowing in the wind. All right, and let's just see what it gives us, and click on Generate. So again, give that roughly 10 to 12 seconds to see what it comes up with. And here we go. So we've got three variations. First of all, let me just zoom out. And we'll go from that one to that one and that one. I mean, all of them look great, but you can see, look, that the lighting is matching. This side of his face is lit. There's a little bit of light hitting the hair there, but then this hair here is in shadow. But look how we've got all these really fine, fine kind of hairs flying off there as well. Absolutely brilliant. And it's matching in with it, actually the lighting in the picture. Let's create three more generations just there. Give it again a 10 to 12 seconds. And there we go. So there's three more kind of variations. But you can see that every single one of them matches with the lighting that's in the original scene. Now, these are only small. When you look at the rest of the, you know, the main picture here, this part of the actual hair is a very, very small part of the actual picture itself. So the resolution is going to be good. But what we can also do is when we come to these here, look, we've got this little icon here where we can actually upscale it. We can click on that and it will then create a higher res resolution version, which I believe is around about 2K for that particular part. So the actual resolution is going to be really cool for that as well. All right. So there we go. That's what I wanted to show you, just those two things. And I think the fact that the AI is able to match that lighting is massively important. It really will really help then to kind of help everything to kind of blend in when you're using it. But like I said right at the start, AI, for, well, certainly for me, AI is literally just an added tool. It's not replacing the actual photography, the lighting and the creativity that's going on. It's purely for me, helping me to either speed up certain tedious, lengthy processes, or maybe as you'll see in a future video, it's actually able for me to uh, add in elements that I couldn't actually find at the time. And by that, I mean props. There might be certain props that we just could not source that I'll be able to use AI for to create. But I'll explain more about that in another video. But that's what I wanted to show you. So 
there you go. So if you got something from this, click on the like button. And if you haven't yet, just click on subscribe. It should just say follow. And I'll see you in the next video.